Welcome back, this is Part-Time Guardian. In this video, we will go over my journey to Legend this season and how you Part-Time Guardians cannot do the same. I know sometimes PvP can be a little bit intimidating, but I'll kind of walk through how folks that only have a little bit of time to play on a weekly basis can get better at PvP and get to Legend in a season. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. First off, believe in yourself. Now, I know that sounds a little trite, but there's a reason for that. The Destiny community can be very elitist from time to time, especially in the PvP arena. Everyone's like, you gotta use this loadout or you gotta try this cer certain strat. That's not necessarily true. The other thing is, people say, hey, get good. Well, for a lot of folks in my community, you probably have so many, so many hours in a day that you can actually play Destiny, so you will be able to get good, but you're also someone who's not gonna be able to devote time to the game full time. So again, believe in yourself. You don't have to be a sweat lord, you don't have to have a specific loadout. With patience and practice, you can do this too. Believe in yourself. The next thing that really helps out is skill-based matchmaking in Destiny has taken a drastic improvement in the last season. What does that mean? Basically now, when you're playing against other people from a minute-to-minute -minute perspective, it's going to determine what your skill is based on who you're playing against and put you in matches with those people. So in general, if you're playing in survival, you're going to be playing over time with people who are similar skill as you. And of course, this will change as you get better. One of the great additions to survival is a freelance playlist. This allows you to play basically individuals against individuals. You won't play against teams that are in fire teams or are stacked and can communicate. Now, you may be tempted to go in with a good fire team yourself and not go into the freelance playlist, and that's fine. The trick is going to be at the very beginning, you may play with someone who's a lot better than you and your fire team, and they may boost you up in the matches where you're not going to be able to compete. So I think at the beginning, it's really important to go in freelance to try that out and to get as many points you can until you level out. Those two changes by themselves will typically give you about halfway to legend. That's what I found. Without too much effort, you'll notice that you're going up very quickly in points. And again, that's because the game is trying to get you to where it feels your level is. So again, that should get you fairly quickly to a place where then it feels a little bit more like work. So from there, let's discuss how you finish. First off, decide what type of player you are and own it. If you're good at getting in people's faces and playing close up, then do that and own that. If you're good at, at the mid-range game, then do that. If you're comfortable playing off and supporting, do that. Don't let every YouTuber and everyone who's on a Discord convince you that you need to play in a certain way, especially not at the beginning, because you need confidence so that you can get better at the game. And when I mean own it, that means if you're that type of player, commit to the decisions you're making. The worst thing you can do is if you decide to be in someone's face, for instance, and then you get a little less confident, and then you start, you know, in the middle of it, say, oh, I gotta play back, I'm gonna die. No, own it. Own it because, yes, you may lose that encounter, but you're going to get better. You're going to determine in the type of player that you are, what's the best way to defeat other players. So again, make sure you play as who you are and who you're comfortable with because that will grow your confidence. Next, find weapons you're comfortable and use them. Use various weapons in PvP and see what you like. What do you like for long range? What do you like for short range? Play practice in PvE like you're playing PvP. So slide into shots in PvE. Do the things that you would normally do in PvP. Then go into a non-competitive Crucible playlist with some of those loadouts. And again, until you're comfortable because when you're in competitive, you want to... You don't want to try to practice in competitive at first because you want to make sure you get the most points you can with every match. And uh, I'll link to a video where I kind of talk about one of my loadouts that I like. Again, it's not a loadout you have to use, but again, it's something my playstyle. Some people may say, hey, that's not a very good loadout. That's not meta. Well, yeah, but I can get a ton of kills and I can beat other people with it because, again, it's my playstyle. Then basically get, learn about the map. So you need to know them backwards and forwards, where the choke points are, where you have lines where you can shoot down lanes. Those are the things that are very important. Map knowledge and how players use maps are probably the number one thing outside of everything else in competitive. It's very important to understand that. So again, practice it outside of competitive, do private matches, do other versions of PvP, get better at specific maps, and that'll help you a long way. Then maximize your armor loadouts with mods and exotics. So there's plenty of videos. Um, I have a PvP build video for hunters I'll link here, but there's plenty of videos out there that'll tell you how to maximize your armor. That's something else you want to kind of maximize because like, for instance, in my case, I like to dodge a lot and be invisible, so I build builds around that. Think through what type of player you want to be. You'll notice that the most part I talk about comfort. 
that's really key to get comfortable and that gives you about halfway there put that all, all together with your favorite weapons armor and that knowledge and you should start to feel confident for your ability to compete again for me specifically and again if this is what you want to do i put those all together in my infinite invisible hunter video which i'll link here that's another opportunity for if that's the type of play style you like you could see in that video how i put all those different pieces together so once you master all of that you'll notice that you get about halfway through the legend ring typically you might be better you might get two thirds you might only get one third but i would say on average you get about halfway through so with that, that's when the real work starts to come in. Once you get here, my next piece of advice is pay attention to teammates. And you should do that in the first part, but that's probably the next thing to up your game. You can't talk to each other in a match, so you have no idea how the team plays, but pay attention to what they're doing. Maybe you have a bunch of people who push all the time, and maybe sometimes they die because of that. Maybe you want to push with them, or maybe if you're someone that stays back, maybe you're the defense guy, the one guy that lives as all of them you know, go into a titan charge where you can actually take out the rest of the team. And then also, if there are people who stay back, maybe you're the person who can help push and flank people. So again, there's going to be different roles in the team, and it's going to change every time you play. So it's very important that you kind of get an idea of what your teammates are doing. In fact, many times what I'll do is when I'm going into a map, I'll kind of get an idea. Even if it's not what I typically do, I'll pay attention to where they're heading. And a lot of times that first match in competitive, it's you may win, but a lot of times it's a loss, and that's okay because you will learn about what your, pl your players do. And the other thing is you're going to learn about your opponents, and that's the next piece. So for your opponents, you're really going to want to know. Some opponents are really good at adapting and figuring out what you're doing. But a lot of opponents like to do the same thing every match. You'll notice them. They go to the same areas. They snipe the same areas. They try to you know, set up behind a corner so they can shotgun you. You'll notice trends. So again, the first match you may lose. That's okay. Don't lose your confidence. Because typically then you'll learn what they do. Try to counter them. Try to do something where you, based on your bat map knowledge and your loadout and what your teammates do, you can come out on top. And it, here's another piece of advice. If you start losing, just, just stop. And what I mean by that is a lot of times if you get on, if I lose one match, I may keep going. But if you lose a couple matches, that's usually a sign that you're, you're, the, the game is bumping you up into a little higher tier. The other thing too is you start getting frustrated. So that's typically where you lose a lot of points. And that's where I've run into my most problems. I'll go on a four to five game losing streak. I'll lose a ton of points. So again, if you start to lose a lot of matches, just stop playing for a little while. And whatever that is, whatever it takes that time to kind of get you comfortable with continuing. Again, once you get to this point, if you win about 50% of your games, because you're not going to win every game, you're going to get to a legend eventually. Once you get above 4,000 points, at least this was for me, the climb up will become very difficult because you're going to run into very good players even within your particular skill-based match level. So while you don't necessarily have to do this, again, you might be able to get to it on your own. Once you get about 4,000, I would say try to find a good uh, few friends to play with. And even if they're... A little worse than you or a little better than you the big thing is you'll be on comms communicating and again at that point that's where you can go outside of free freelance and go back into the normal mode and then you typically will get to 5500 in no time also make sure you start early in the season so it doesn't feel like so much for grind and pressure at the end of the season obviously we're a few weeks out from the end of the season if you're close obviously that's something you could do if you're if you're not i would just wait till next season the other thing is every week on the lower levels, if you play at least three games, you get bonus uh, points. So that's something that's useful as well. And if you don't make it in one season, keep trying. So last season, I decided at the end of the season, since skill-based matchmaking seemed to be making it a little bit easier, I decided to try for it myself. And I kept getting bumped into the 4,000 wall, and I couldn't get any higher than that. And, and it, I also started late, so I had a hard time finishing. This season, I started earlier, and I actually made it close to 5,000 by myself. But once I got close to 5,000, I started running into a lot of really sweaty players. So that's where I got some friends of mine to play, and I got to 5,500. So again, you can do it, um, even if you think you're the worst PvP player. And in other videos, I could talk about things you could do to improve your sniping and other things. But I think if you do these things, I you can do it. That's the biggest thing. You need to have confidence that over time, if you keep playing at it, even the worst player at the time can get to be at least a competent player in pvp and that's why i play because it's actually my favorite game mode in the game again i hope this video was useful for you um, again i make these videos primarily for part-time guardians people who don't have as much time to play as other players 
and people who maybe have other responsibilities, maybe their parents, maybe they have uh, you know difficult jobs, and so they can't play like streamers and other YouTubers who make videos who it looks like they do impossible things. But again, with some practice, you can do those things too. So again, I hope it was useful for you. Uh, if it was, feel free to subscribe to the channel, get into the comments, and we can talk about what you would like to see next and how I can help you out with that. And I'll see you, Guardians, in the Tower.